I've got a confession, you guys. Lately, I've been feeling blue. Now, at the risk of telling a completely insensitive joke, we'll cut right to it. Since I upgraded to macOS Mojave, my personal color calibration settings on my monitor reverted, and I've been editing videos and photos with completely out of whack calibration. So the 5K iMac, at least the one that I have, out of the box comes with decent color calibration. Not perfect by any means, but these things drift over time. And I alter those myself. I set them up to look like my iPad Pro or my iPhone 11 Pro because those have very well calibrated displays. But unfortunately, I didn't realize that that got reset again when I upgraded to Mojave. So I made a few mistakes, made a few blue videos. Colors are a little off. How do we keep this from happening? Well, now that we're in quarantine and isolation, it's time to catch up on things that we should have been thinking about, should have been doing, but have been putting off because, you know, that's life. Data Color and Spider got a hold of me. They wanted me to have a look at this, the Spider X Pro, and oh my goodness, this has been sitting in my Amazon cart for over a year. Well, the previous version of this before that then was discontinued, and then this one sat in my cart. <laughs> when they got a hold of me and said, hey, do you want to have a look at this? I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. I should have done that a long time ago. So here we are. It's time to look at the Datacolor Spider X Pro. If you haven't calibrated your monitor yet, like an idiot, like me, and you're doing videos, you're doing photos, it's time to do what you need to do. So we're going to crack this open. We're going to do this pretty much in real time. You're going to see what I see. If it's hard to install, you're going to see me make some mistakes. But otherwise, we're going to get this monitor calibrated. And we're going to come back and do the last segment with a calibrated video. And we're going to see what kind of a difference that makes. You can swap back and forth between. Let me know what you think. So let's get to it. All right, let's get this started. Open up the Spider Pro box. Shows you where to download the software. Let's get right on that. All right, looks like we're using the Spider X Pro, not Elite, which I gotta be honest, a little bit annoyed with that sort of branding effort. You expect Pro to be the top of the line. It's the Pro thing iPhone Pro, which it's a phone, but anyway. Elite, the step above Pro. Blindly agree to the uh, software requirements. Approve the install on my watch. Oh boy, this is asking for some hefty permissions. Wow, that is, yeah, it really wants all the things. There we go. We have installed the recommended software. Yeah, let's see what's in the box. We've got a big old dongle. And there are really no instructions here. Hmm. I was expecting to have my hand held just a little bit more in these quarantine times. Sometimes we just want a little bit of human contact. So I guess I'll start the program and see what it tells me. Now I'm hoping that I can plug this into my USB hub because I have three of my USB ports taken up directly with these USB-C cables that plug into my scratch drives here. It's all USB-C, that's great. My fourth port goes into this hub, but not everything works great through a hub. You might be surprised to learn. Mostly just high speed stuff though, so hopefully this will. Now, one thing that doesn't work through a hub sometimes are things that require a bit of power. And this is where I'm wondering. Okay, I don't need tips. Make sure the spider sensor is plugged into your USB port before continuing. So here we go, fingers crossed. Press next. Please enter the serial number or license code. Inside the box, yep, there it is. All right, so yes, my screen has been on for at least half an hour. 
There is no intense lighting falling directly on the screen. In my room here, I have a huge window, which you might have seen me shooting in front of. That's actually a north-facing window. So the amount of light coming through it is somewhat consistent, and there's never direct sunlight coming into this room. And I also have a big diffusion screen over the window. So I have pretty consistent and no hot lighting in this room, unlike my old room, which later in the day, the sun would sometimes come through. So yes, display controls. Have you reset your monitor settings? Color. And yeah, it looks like it's already defaulted as I suspected. Level of brightness that I'm comfortable. Now generally when I edit, I go two steps below maximum. The screen on my iMac, it's from 2015. It's not exceptionally bright, so I feel like that's about right, but we'll see what Spider has to say about it. And yes, it is plugged into the USB. Next is a desktop computer. Apple iMac 5K. Full calibration, that sounds like a good thing to do. All right, place the spider on the desk as shown below. Now I'm going to put it here. I have a light on my face, so I'm gonna put it next to the monitor here so that it can't see that light. Next. Room light is high. That's kind of surprising to me. It's quite dark down there. And uh, this camera here is uh, over ISO 1000. This level is uncontrolled. Lower the room light if possible. All right, well, I'm gonna turn off these extra lights that are making me look good so that I can get this calibration right. Oh boy, it's dark in here now. Let's get a little ISO up in this business. There we go. All right, let's try that again. Room light is medium. That's a little better. Place the spider on the display as shown. Shoop. Stretch it out. Place it here. Next. Whoa. Getting some colors now. Okay, click the update button to measure the screen brightness. So adjust the brightness control until the indicator is in the middle. Oh boy, it wants a real dim. Well, that's as close as I can get. Now online I had read a fair amount of reviews and concerns with lots of different color calibrators that uh, when you're using a P3 monitor like this and not using a ridiculously expensive calibrator, you might get some mixed results and some frustrating problems at the end. So hopefully this works out for us. So I just named this the Apple iMac 5K April Dark Room Calibration. Yep, it looks quite different. I don't think that uh, warm or cool is necessarily the word for it either. Okay, so this is one calibration. The colors are way more different than I expected them to be, honestly. Okay, now I want to go back into this. I actually want to do it again. Because I do want to see how different the calibration will end up being if I turn these lights back on. So I've just turned my hall light back on, as you can see, we're much better lit now. Let's measure the room light here. And dangler on over here. And so while someone might just put this calibration in, regardless of setting, right now it's very overcast, it's kind of early in the day. So this is about as dark as it's going to be in this room during the day. And so that's one calibration. And I have my stairway light on in front of me. So I'll probably end up creating four to six profiles for this. Hopefully it allows me to. Hopefully I don't need an elite calibrator to do this so that I can take into account all the stuff going on. So say we have a sunny day, it gets a little brighter in here, and whether or not I have that light on. And I might even end up doing one for at night when all there is is this light and no light coming from the window. 
So while there isn't direct sunlight coming in here, there is always the chance that we'll have some sort of interference that may alter it. And I'm interested to see how much of a difference this is going to make if I switch between these different profiles. Maybe it won't even be necessary at all. But I am happy to report that it's working just fine through my USB hub, thankfully. So this is going to be iMac 5K April. I'm adding the month because calibration tends to drift over time. April dark and hall light. So let's see if there's any difference between, there's actually a pretty significant difference between the two settings. So the hall light, it takes some warmth out of the screen, which is interesting because the light is somewhat warm in color balance. And I feel like the screen is actually appears to be brighter when I have the dark room setting. All right, and we're done, it's dialed in. And I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to keep this by the computer. You can tell me whether it gets too bright in here. Take a room light measurement when this is sitting on my desk here. Room light level is high. And again, I'm kind of surprised at that because I feel like it's kind of dark in here right now. It gets much brighter even though this is just a north facing window and there aren't a lot of lights in this room. <laughs> when I'm filming in my studio, especially how those lights on, it gets way brighter in here. All right, let's load up some uh, wedding pictures that have some skin tones in them just to uh, see what kind of a difference this made for us. So this is a picture that I edited on the iMac as it is, like this. It has kind of a cool tone. I tend to edit cooler anyway. Now if I go to my current setting, all of a sudden we're looking a little greener. It's kind of disappointing. And all the ladies here. And we switch back. Ooh, very cool, a little redder. And yeah, it looks like it's really shifted my monitor more into a greener, slightly sort of warmer color space. Very surprising. Am I gonna have to go back and re-edit my photos now? I don't know, it probably still looks okay. But now I know I'm a little bit closer to where I should be. Now again, this iMac calibrator color space right here this is not what I edited these photos on. It was one that I had built up myself to be more accurate. But there we go, we're calibrated. So now let's head back to the couch and see what difference this makes for the edit. Ah, here we are in calibration world. Now one other important part about getting calibrated is white balance. What I have here is a X-Rite color checker. If you want me to talk more about white balance and this sort of thing, let me know down in the comments. I've considered doing a video comparing this to the cheaper options, because oh boy is this expensive. So we are white balanced with a color checker, we are calibrated with the Spider X, and I gotta be honest, it looks different. So what do you think about monitor calibration? What do you think about what we just did here and Spider X in particular? Let me know down in the comments. I'll get back to you, I'm always hanging out down there. So until next time, go take some photos in a color accurate manner.